So we're taking notes on the first fundamental theorem of calculus. If f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and capital F or large F is an antiderivative of little f on that interval from a to b, then the first fundamental theorem of calculus states that the integral from a to b of little f of x dx is equal to the antiderivative substituting in b, subtract the antiderivative substituting in a. In our first example, we're going to do the antiderivative from 1 to 2 of x squared minus 3 dx. The antiderivative is 1 third x cubed minus 3x plus c from the interval from 1 to 2. Substituting in 2 into our antiderivative and then subtract substituting in 1. We'll simplify to get 8 thirds minus 6 plus c minus 1 third plus 3 minus c. The constants will cancel out. Combining together our like fractions and combining together our whole numbers and then getting common denominators. Our second example will anti-derive from 1 to 4 the square root of x to the third dx. Rewriting our problem to read x to the 3 halves. We can go ahead and anti-derive now, so we'll be getting 1 over 5 halves x to the 5 halves from 1 to 4. Don't need the plus c because the constants would just cancel out. Our coefficient rewrites to read 2 fifths x to the 5 halves 1 to 4. Following the first fundamental theorem of calculus, we'll substitute in our 4, subtract substituting in our 1. Simplify and then get your solution. The third example is the integral from negative 2 to negative 1 of u minus 1 over u squared du. We'll rewrite the problem before we begin. Read u minus u to the negative 2 du. Anti-derive each term. We'll have 1 half u squared minus 1 over negative 1 u to the negative 1 from negative 2 to negative 1. Before using our first fundamental theorem of calculus, we'll rewrite the problem so it's easier to deal with. Substituting in our negative 1 first, subtract substituting in negative 2, and then simplifying to get the solution to our problem. Remember when combining your terms together, try to combine your fractions together first, and your whole numbers makes the problem easier. For our next example, we're going to antiderive from 0 to pi over 4 of secant squared x dx. The antiderivative of secant squared x is tangent of x. Using the first fundamental theorem of calculus, we'll get the tangent of pi over 4 minus the tangent of 0. Tangent of pi over 4 is sine of pi over 4 with cosine of pi over 4. So from our unit circle, sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is also square root of 2 over 2, so that's why it becomes 1. Tangent of 0 is 0. For our next example, we're going to do the antiderivative from 0 to 2 of the absolute value of 2x minus 1 dx. When you're thinking about absolute value, remember it's like a piecewise graph, so you have a negative slope and a positive slope, which creates that V picture going from 0 to 2. If we shade in that area, we can see that we have one area that's under a negative slope and one area that's under a positive slope. So we'll split up our graph from 0 to 1 half using the negative equation, negative slope, and then from 1 half to 2 using a positive slope equation. So we'll anti-derive each one of our integrals separately and follow our first fundamental theorem of calculus. So distributing the negative on our first integral, and the second integral stays just as it is. So anti-deriving will get negative x squared plus x from 0 to 1 half. 
and then for our second integral, we get x squared minus x from 1 half to 2. Following that first fundamental theorem of calculus, we'll substitute in 1 half to get negative 1 half squared plus 1 half. Substituting in 0, get negative 0 squared plus 0. Then we'll add doing our second fundamental theorem calculus on our second integral, substituting in the 2, then subtracting, substituting in the 1 half. Simplifying our problem, we'll want to combine together our like fractions and our like whole numbers to make the problem easier to work with. Don't forget to distribute your negative sign when working with your problem. So negative 1 fourth and the negative 1 fourth will make a negative 1 half. The positive 1 half and the positive 1 half will make 1. And now adding our whole numbers together, we'll have negative 1 half plus 3. Then combine together to get our final answer of 5 halves.